Hello everyone on YouTube, Masquerade here. Today, I want to discuss something that's been on my mind for a long time. One of those things that I would like to talk about is Japan. And how much I really want to go there. As you saw in my previous video of 50 random things about me, if you haven't seen that video, go check it out. I mean, if you want to know more things about me, go ahead. But anyways, you probably are thinking about this. Why don't you just go? And my response to that is, no money. And I mean, that is the main thing, but there are several other different types of reasons why it is uh, hard to go to Japan as of now. But uh, there is one in particular that I would like to discuss with you guys. Now that one thing does stand out uh, compared to all the rest in my personal opinion. But first, let's talk about the several issues that comes with it, which I'll explain later. But first, the money issue. Like a lot of people, I'm broke. I don't have a job currently. Unemployed, basically. So this can't be done immediately. This will be like a future goal of mine. Mind, something that will check off on my bucket list. Now, I don't know how much a plane ticket would cost to go to Japan, but I would assume that it's not that cheap. I just basically need to find a job, hopefully, and save up and not be lazy, and that could be a solution to my Japan plane ticket problem. Or, hopefully, you two could help me with my finances in the near future. But for now, we'll just have to see. The other thing that could be a big problem for me is language. Because I am Korean American, so I don't know how to speak Japanese. That's one of the fears that I have of going to a foreign country. If you don't know the language, then the people there, bad people, might take advantage of you. Either I would have to learn how to speak Japanese, or if I could find someone who can speak Japanese fluently to be my personal translator. Which both is very difficult to do. Now, people might think that this might not be a big issue because a lot of these foreign countries might be able to speak English because English is a global language that you might run across some people that might know and speak speak English. However, Japan and Korea are known to be an older population. And the reason for that is the birth rate of these two countries are very much slowly declining. So this means uh, the possibility of you meeting individuals in the older population is very high. So when you meet these certain individuals, you are going to have a little bit of difficulty in trying to communicate with them. Interestingly though, besides the older population, there are people that might know English. However, they might not be comfortable speaking English. English because speaking and learning English is very two different things and you might come across people that want to speak in English to you but they might be too shy or they might not be too confident in their language learning skills. Now these things can be little issues that can be overcome however there are some problems that are more concerning and rightfully so and these are natural things that happen in Japan for example tsunamis, earthquakes, Mount Fuji which is an active volcano so you just never know what might happen. But the one thing that I have high hesitation about when visiting Japan is radioactivity. And you know, it is a reasonable concern. You hear a lot about it in the news, and even my mom tells me about it. An example incident is, we can think of as an incident that happened at Fukushima, or some of the things that happened in the past history of Japan dealing with radioactivity. All of these things are very dangerous, and it will put someone in a worrying state when visiting Japan. But hopefully when I visit Japan one day, everything will be safe, everything will be contained, and I'm pretty sure Japan is doing everything that they can to make change and take safety precautions in order to combat the situation to make things better for the future. And that's just something we'll probably have to wait and see and see how it plays out. Now, with all that being said, let's go down to the list of my 10 favorite Japanese food that I want to eat when I visit Japan. Now, the first food that I would love to eat or try in Japan is sushi. Now, the reason why I want to try sushi is because I feel like sushi is one of those things that you must try because it might taste differently. Who knows? It is a staple it is a common theme kind of like in Korea you try kimchi in America you try a burger or in Vietnam you try pho so on and so forth I also want to see and try if there's any differences or if there's any similarities between the sushi in Japan compared to America now I'm no sushi expert but I feel like it'll be very interesting to see also lastly there's this sushi conveyor belt that is in Japan now we do have those in America but I feel like conveyor belts in Japan will be a little bit more 
unique and different in my opinion, but I just want to try and see because it might be interesting and it might be fun. Now, the second item that I would like to eat and try is tonkatsu, aka deep fried pork cutlet. Now, there's a Korean version of this, which is called tonkatsu. That's the one I'm more familiar with, but in a Japanese version, it might be a little bit different. It's one of my favorite dishes I liked as a child and even now. So I'm very curious about the taste and how it will be prepared. And just to add uh, something else, keeping on the theme of the fried stuff, I would like to add tempura to the list for Japan. Now I also want to compare this dish because I just love fried food and it's so crunchy, so delicious, so tasty. The third one is ramen. Not like the cup of noodles or packaged ramen that we all know and love, but the actual dish ramen, it's totally different. It is very popular and a common dish in Japan. Also, if you've seen Naruto like I have, it's definitely something that will be very special to try out. I will be very excited and curious of how it tastes. The fourth one is natto. Now, I haven't tried natto before and I've heard like it's an acquired taste, but I like to try new things and maybe I like it, maybe I won't. But it's definitely a dish that is worth trying when visiting Japan. And when I do try it, I'll know what natto really tastes like. Now, the fifth one is soba noodles because I want to see and try if I could do the soba noodle challenge that I've been seeing a lot on YouTube. The flavor profile of the soba noodles are kind of neutral flavor or chewy. I just want to see what Japan has to offer when it comes to those soba noodle challenges because I feel like I could do it maybe, who knows? Another thing that I would like to add is something called the bamboo noodles. This is kind of pretty cool because this is like a noodle catching game where it's a restaurant with bamboo sleds for noodles to slide through and then you catch it with your chopsticks and dip it in the sauce and then you eat it like that. If anything, that's definitely a place that you should visit in Japan for the experience. Pretty unique and interesting indeed. The sixth one is melon pan or melon bread. Now this one is also one of those classics that you have to try in Japan as well. You see it on anime, you see it on social media. It's definitely something that I'm very curious about taste and what's the hype is all about. Now I love sweet things and I think I might enjoy it. it kind of reminds me of this Mexican bread called pan dulce, which is sweet bread. Now, I have heard from some people that it might be a little bit dry, which pan dulce also can be dry as well, but it's a classic. I'll definitely try it anyways and see if I like it when I visit Japan. The seventh one is onigiri, another Japanese classic. You see this a lot, especially in convenience stores. These are really good and simple, perfect for snack time or lunch time, whatever time. And there are many different types of flavors depending on what you put inside of the onigiri. I think so far, the only flavor that I've tried is tuna but I think that might be too basic and when I do go to Japan I definitely want to visit a Japanese convenience stores and try every single types of flavors of onigiri just to get also the vibes and the experience. The eighth one is a well-known classic which is takoyaki. It is a grilled slash fried octopus. It's so scrumptious and so delicious. I've had it many times and I can't get enough of it. I will be definitely excited and looking forward to it when I visit Japan and I'm pretty sure there's going to be some different types of takoyakis out there in Japan because it's very diverse. But anyways, I would be very much into it and I know it's going to be very tasty. The ninth one is one of my personal favorites. It is yakisoba. It is a stir fried noodle dish and and I've eaten a lot of this during my college days. Nostalgia. It's a very simple looking dish, nothing too fancy, but it will definitely make your stomach very happy. And I'll look forward to it when I try it in Japan. The last and 10th one on this list is omurice, which is an egg omelet. I love egg omelets, by the way. I love all egg dishes just in general, but I'm very more familiar with the Korean version of an egg omelet. There is a specific type of egg omelet, which is called keramari in Korean which is a rolled egg omelet, which is a slight difference from the Japanese version. Now, I have never tried the Japanese omelet, which I'm very excited about when I visit Japan. So I don't know what to expect because I've never tried it before, but when I do, it will be very interesting to see when I get there. So those are the 10 Japanese food that I have chosen that I would like to eat or try when I visit Japan. Now, I know my list is basically the most popular, common, well-known type of dishes, but I'm naming these for a 
a reason. And the reason why I'm naming these is because I feel like these are a good foundation for me when it comes to general Japanese cuisine because I don't have that much specific knowledge of Japanese foods. But I feel like this is a good start in my personal opinion. But I'll be down. I'll be down to try everything and anything as long as it's not poisonous. But I'm just making my own list of the basics. Of course, there are other Japanese dishes that I have never tried or never heard of before. But all of that can change when I visit Japan. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to like the video, share the video, subscribe, turn that notification on so you don't miss a video, and comment down below what you thought of this video, and I'll see you guys next time.